All right. Where do I start? Um, so I was out on a uh, little mini vacation with the family this weekend, out of town. We had a wonderful time. And uh, while I was out, I received a comment in the comment section on uh, one of the videos for this guitar amp. And it, it just turned a major light bulb on in my mind. And uh, I have to give a uh, just a real shout out to YouTube uh, member uh, Hammond F. Uh, brought something up that was pretty blatantly obvious that I totally missed, which was 100% my fault. And that is why I love YouTube, is that uh, we can work together and uh, solve problems like this. So, really, really a good thing. But what it comes down to, this transformer here, the output transformer, is a push-pull transformer. And when you have a push-pull transformer, okay, and yes, I'm not going to get all fancy with computer graphics and stuff, but... So you have your core of your transformer here, which is your iron core. Okay, let me get you a little bit. Uh, let me move you over a little here. Maybe we can get a little better view of what we're talking about. All right. So you have your core. You have your output that goes to your speaker and you have your primary okay that goes to your two tubes so this would go to tube number one and this would go to tube number two to your plates okay okay just like that and then these guys would go to ground and this would be your B plus. Now if you notice, these just kind of act like this. Right? The vacuum tubes when they're biased basically act as a resistor causing current to flow through the coil around here and around to ground. When I put B plus on here, it is a DC voltage. That DC voltage will flow this direction on this part of the winding into ground, and this direction on this part of the winding to ground. And what that does, now we all know, if we take a coil of wire and we wrap it around an iron core, Okay, and we put DC onto it, you make a magnet. We magnetize the iron. Okay, any ferrous metal will do this. The difference with an output transformer like this for a push pull is that by putting the voltage in the center tap, we are causing current to flow in opposite directions, equal and opposite directions, across, with respect to the core. So, whatever positive polarity or north pole polarity you're making here, you're making an equal and opposite south pole polarity on this one. Okay? Okay, sorry, I'm back. So anyways, because you have equal and opposite polarity from a magnetic and electric field standpoint, the net output, you know, magnetic flux on this uh, core is zero. It's non-magnetic because you have you have a electrical field in equal and opposite directions, so they cancel out. Okay? So, you know, old-fashioned algebra, you know, a negative one plus a positive one equals zero. Okay? And that's the same same idea, same principle behind this. As long as your two tubes are biased equally, you got nothing here. Okay. Now, let's talk about some other things. 
when you have a core it is made of some sort of a ferrous material so when we look at uh, you know here's here's a box full of toroids all right and you notice toroids have different colors all right so these ones are blue all right and you see they're they're called you know different numbers dash one and t68 and all these things these numbers actually represent okay um, here's a here's a green one I'm just showing you some examples this one's green the color coding and so forth represent the type of ferrous or ferrite material that's used now again when we talk about transformers uh, we have to think about a, a word called permeability okay and I don't know how to spell this P E R M E A B I L I T Y I'm not an English major as you can tell <laughs> so permeability permeability and this is definitely not going to be the Wikipedia or or the dictionary definition but permeability permeability is essentially the the ability of which an electrical field can induce a magnetic field on a particular material so how quickly and how efficiently and as with everything else in nature there is a trade-off okay so the reason we have different color codes is because we use different types of magnetic core material and there's always a trade-off as to for instance how quickly so if this is a magnetic field building up how quickly something a magnetic field will build up and how quickly it will decay all right versus how how mag magnetized it will be with a given amount of electric field okay this is physics and this is way beyond what most of us ever have to worry about but it comes into play why my mistake is what it is okay so what that means is when you're dealing with things at low frequencies we don't really care if there's a little bit of a lag because at audio frequencies the frequency of that change you know and that change of that field okay is so low that there's plenty of time for that core to magnetize and demagnetize so they use a type of material that can get really magnetic even though it's takes longer to do however however any of you folks that have worked with radios um, when you look at the core of a coil in a radio receiver those have to turn on and off and change very very rapidly you know sometimes hundreds of thousands or even millions of times per second and if we use this same kind of core material that you see in your regular audio output transformer it would saturate very quickly because um, it doesn't magnetize as much as the other material so the type of core material you use is very important in order to carry a lot of current a lot of power you have to have the type of iron that we're using in an output transformer the bad part of that is you can't just put a DC voltage on it it will saturate very easily and even magnetize in some instances where your transformer will actually become a permanent magnet a weak one however but what that's going to do is distort your waveform if this transformer if this iron is magnetized in one direction or the other it's going to oppose uh, slightly in the one direction and assist slightly in the opposite direction so you'll have an imbalance in the transformer what's going to happen is if you put an AC you know sine wave you know in there for a sound what you'll get is something like you know like that and it won't it won't be equal so these transformers when we use okay this is push pull okay so I'm talking in you know <laughs> roundabout way but this the purpose of all of this in a push-pull we have 
no magnetism on the core when the amp is sitting idle. And only when you change the difference between these two, which is what you're doing when, you're, when your driver section is putting a signal into it, only at that point in time is this going to seesaw back and forth north and south, your, the magnetics. Okay, it'll go from zero to positive and then negative. All right. Okay, keep that in mind. Here's our output to our speaker. That stays the same. However, when we talk about single-ended, we're putting a voltage here, which is DC. We're going to our tube. All right. So we have a constant current flow always in one direction. And all we're doing is making that current flow higher and lower based on what's going on with our grid and with our bias. Okay. What that means is this core is being magnetized. Okay. And if, if we put too much current through this core, it will saturate. Now two things happen when a core saturates. Number one, it's as magnetic as it can possibly be. Meaning if I turn, if I put a signal on this and I drive in one direction, it can't get any more magnetic. So that signal will flat top. So if, if I go something like this, what I'm going to see is something like this. Okay, it's going to clip off part or a lot of half of your cycle. So the only way that we can fix that problem is to only put enough of a magnetic field or an electrical field around here to only partially magnetize this transformer so that it's far enough away from its saturation so that you can get that swing. Now, the problem is, in order to do that, you need huge iron. So, we look at this transformer right here. This little transformer, compared to my hand, in a push-pull configuration, because of the no magnetics, this little transformer can put 12 to 15 watts of power out. Okay, and it can do it pretty easily with clean, undistorted power. Okay, in order to have enough iron to, can't, to not saturate it sitting at single-ended when it's, when it's being set up for single-ended use, that transformer would be bigger than this one, or as big as this one. It would be huge. Okay if you just were going to use a traditional iron core like you have here with E's and I's. Okay? The only thing you can do, which is what they do on a single-ended, is they put something in these transformers called air gap. Okay? They're called air gap transformers. Okay? So, this transformer has laminations in it like this. Okay? So, if you look very carefully, and I zoom right in on it, you can see individual pieces of iron. And you can tell that they are done like this in a certain manner. Okay? And these little pieces of iron, the thinner they are, the more they break up the eddy currents in that transformer. Now, again, we're not going to get into eddy currents and all that. That's way too much for this little video. But, keeping that in mind, to change the interaction from one lamination to the other, we can substitute one of these laminations with an insulator. So every other one of these, instead of being iron, is going to be 
a piece of plastic, a piece of vinyl, a piece of something that's non-magnetic. So you're going every other uh, every other lamination is going to be magnetic and every other lamination is going to be non-magnetic. Okay? By doing that you're putting, you're introducing a, an air gap, just a slight one, between each lamination. It's going to set the saturation point of that core higher. It's also going to make the transformer less efficient. So I'll need more power to get the same amount of magnetism. However, sitting at idle, it's not going to saturate as easily. All right. So long story short, you cannot use a push-pull transformer in a single-ended application. Now, I say that with, a, with one caveat. If I wanted to have... <laughs> like a little radio with a 50C5 uh, tube running a half a watt, I could use this transformer as a single-ended half-watt transformer. And because the current and everything is so low, and the magnetic electric, electromagnetic field would be so low, uh, you know, only being a half a watt, this transformer would handle that. It's just a really inefficient way to do it. Okay? Whereas if you use a laminated single-ended transformer, it can be much smaller and do the job. The other thing is, by adding the laminations, you still are making the transformer physically larger to get all the iron in the, in the core. That's why when you see a big, you know, high-wattage single-ended transformer, like 10 or 20 watts, they're always really big. And if you get ones that are not air core, they're even bigger yet. You know, so a 30-watt or 50 watt transformer can easily weigh you know 10 to 20 pounds and only put out you know 40 watts 50 watts single-ended whereas a 50 watt uh, push-pull transformer would be maybe about the size of this power transformer here which is a reasonable size you know maybe seven eight pounds something like that so again I, I'm doing this quick video and this quick explanation to, number one, apologize for leading you all down a rabbit hole on this, and number two, to let you know that in order for this circuit to work, everything else is good. This is going to work. It is a good design. However, I cannot use this transformer. I will have to get a single-ended. Now, I did a little research, and EdCore makes a, an you know, open-end transformer, meaning it doesn't have these fancy metal bells and stuff. It's just a base transformer. I can buy a 25-watt uh, output transformer for this circuit that is compatible with the 6550 tube and the full voltage of this transformer, and I can buy it for about $32, which I don't think is a big investment. Now, the caveat is it doesn't have the frequency response you know, of a high fidelity one. So it's not going to be a big 20 pound transformer. Uh, but this is a guitar amp. The lowest note on a guitar is a low E, unless you detune the guitar. And a low E is around 82, 82 hertz. And the high, highest notes are nowhere near 20 kilohertz. So that being said, that transformer will work very, very well for this application, and even the inefficiency of it not being high fidelity will play to our advantage when we want to deal with distortion and things like that. So, I'm going to bend my rule a little bit because I have no choice, and I'm this far into the project, and I'm going to order a $32 transformer, the right one, and then rebias this again based on that, and I think we're going to see that uh, this is going to work really well. The other thing I've done in the meantime, just to give you a quick update, is I changed our driver circuit a little bit. Um, I changed my cathode bias resistors on the two sections of the tube here and added a bypass capacitor on the driver to give us a little more amplification. Uh, the one I used was very conservative, the design, okay, with the 2K resistors. I dropped, and just to show you what I'm talking about, I dropped 
this from a 2K to a 1.5K. I took this out, put this, took this all out, these three, and changed that to a 1.5K. And then right here I put a bypass capacitor of about 47 microfarads. And what that did was that gave us a little more drive output here at this point and a little more gain in the circuit, which is going to allow us to have a little more, uh, little more punch to the input of this 6550 when we get that. Okay, so this guy here is going to get replaced with the correct transformer. Everything else is going to be good. And as soon as that transformer comes in, which unfortunately the negative thing about EdCor is it usually takes about six weeks. So this project's going to be on hold for six weeks. And I do have quite a few other things stacking up. So you may see some videos in the near future here of some. Uh, some uh, receiver repairs. I have two receivers right away that need done and a few other things. So we'll do a couple other projects while this is sitting on the burner and as uh, soon as that other transformer comes in we'll resume this and then maybe we'll go in the wood shop and even work on a custom cabinet for this uh, to make a little combo amp out of it. So anyhow I apologize again but I'm glad I made the mistake and not you guys <laughs> so that when we're done with this, um, you can see what works and what doesn't. So it was a good lesson, I think, and uh, hope you all uh, forgive me for this, and I hope you all continue to watch and give me a thumbs up, and uh, more to come.